Hey there everyone, in this video I'm going to go over chapter 5, section 9, modeling with polynomial functions. Um, so in this video it's pretty calculator intensive, uh, that's why it might look a little bit different. Um, but, uh, I mean, that's why I'm doing it on the computer. Let's just talk about finite differences real quick. You've seen finite differences before in Algebra 1, where to show that something was a linear equation, you had to subtract the x values to see that if they were all um, equally spaced. And then you had to subtract the y values to see if they were all the same number, and then you did the change in y over the change in x. That's how you calculated slope by hand in Algebra 1. So you've done that um, at least a little bit. And then you might have even done this first difference, second difference thing where you subtract them. And if the first differences aren't all the same number, then you subtract them again. And when I say subtract them, we're going in like kind of like a right to left order. I'm doing 4 minus 9 is negative 5. 1 minus 4 is negative 3 and so on. And so on this one, uh, I did negative 3 minus negative 5, and that's 2. Negative 1 minus negative 3, that's 2. So all the second differences are the same. So because the second differences are all the same, that tells me it's a second, it's a, the degree of the function is going to be 2, and which means it's going to be a quadratic function. So in here, I wrote basically the patterns, and it kind of makes sense. First difference is linear, that's because that's a one degree uh, polynomial function. Two degree polynomial function, second difference quadratic. Three degree, third difference cubic. Four degree, fourth difference quartic. Okay? And so here are the TI inspired steps of how to run a linear regression, quadratic regression, cubic regression, or quartic regression, depending on, and it all depends on what that finite difference is. Because it, it'll, it'll take a long time to plug it in and do like a guess and check, kind of get the three um do it again with the six do it again with the seven do it again with the eight um so yeah you want to do that finite difference first to a show your work and b lead you to which type of function it'll be and that'll tell you which type of regression to run so in this um example right here um we are going to do the differences between these numbers okay so i had the differences on this screen and I have the function too, but I don't want to talk about that yet. And so 4 minus 1 is 3, 10 minus 4 is 6, 20 minus 10 is 10, and so on. So the first inferences were all different. Then I had a 28 minus 21, 21 minus 15, you know, so I got 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Um, those are still different. So the third difference, they're all going up by 1s. So the third difference is all 1s. That tells me that it is a degree 3, so it's a cubic function, all right? And then I got this from plugging it into the calculator, which is what I'm going to go through right here. So here, I, um, if you're looking at the home screen, you would go to a new document or you would click this button right here to add a list and spreadsheet. Um, but uh, yeah, I already have it in there. So let's just um, take this one out real quick. All right. So... You type it in, title your columns X and Y. It's the simplest title to give them. Everything's typed in, as you can see. A common mistake people have is they leave it hanging here, like the last piece of data. Make sure you press enter or down to, to get that over. And then the next step you're going to do is you're going to go control, doc, and then you'll do one, okay? And then when you press one, um, oops, when you press one, it adds this blank calculator screen okay um so again and it's linking it all right so when you do the control doc one it's linked together and then you can do menu statistics stat calculations and then we're going to go to cubic regression and then you can just type in x and y in here and then you can just press enter or click ok and it shows you all this so this is your answer see how it's in this form um it says uh, regression equation x to the third plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Um, so it says a is 0. 0.16, and then it rounds up the last one to 7. b is 0. 0.5, 0. 0.3. d, I'll talk about d in a second. r squared. If r squared is 1, it, it's a statistical uh, number here. 
R squared being one tells you that you have a perfect correlation, like 100%. As long as this number is close to one, or, or if it's one, then it's perfect. If it's really close to one, like 0 0.9998, that's a really close correlation. You did it right. But if it's a, um, a smaller number, then it's a weak correlation. So let me show you what I mean. Here, I'm going to run it as a linear regression, which is the wrong answer. Okay. So I run it as a linear regression. My R squared is 0 0.9057. So that's kind of a weak correlation. All right. Whereas before it was one. So that can kind of lead you to, um, the, if you ever see that, you might, uh, I just want you to recognize like, oh, maybe I did it wrong. Okay. Because it, it's supposed to be one or very close to one because, you know, sometimes it, it's just close to it. So, like, look for a one or a 0 0.999, something like that, 0 0.998. Okay, I'm kind of rambling now. Now, what I did for my answer, um, here are my answers. What I did was I um, put them in fraction form. So, when you see, when you see uh, these decimals that are continuing, you would just type it in. And you don't round that last number. That's what the calculator did. It rounded the last number. So type it in, press 6 a bunch of times. This seems about enough. And then hit menu and go to number and approximate to fraction or menu 2, 2. And then this little thing pops up. You press enter. It tells me my fraction is 1 half. So if I didn't know what fraction 0.5 was, I could do that. Type in 0.5 um, number, approximate to fraction, press enter. Okay. And then if I don't know what 0.3 is, it doesn't matter if you type in the zero first or not. Again, just press it a bunch of times. Menu, two, two, press enter. That's all I got, one-sixth, one-half, and one-third. Um, so this is one-sixth. That's one-half. That's one-third. This is zero. This is scientific notation. It's supposed to show up as zero. For some reason, it didn't. But this is saying move the decimal backwards 12 spots. So it's, it's zero. So D is zero. So in my answer... I did, um, this was the form, AX to the third plus BX squared plus CX plus C. It's supposed to count down by a power each time. And so there was no D term because that was a plus zero right there. Okay. So in this second example, if you want to pause the video right here and do it yourself, I encourage you to do that, but I'm going to keep going. All right. So in this second example, the third differences ended up being the same again. They were all 108. This one was all one. It doesn't really have anything to do with the function. It just told me, told me that it was a cubic function. Okay. So all I had to do was plug this into, um, plug it into a table. And so here I have it plugged in and I title it XX and YY this time because I already have the other data plugged in. And so you're going to hit control doc one add a calculator. Then you do menu six and one and then number seven again, and then I'll say XX and YY, and just know that if you click that side arrow, it will uh, show you your title columns uh, somewhere in that menu. And then just hit OK, and so you see it said 0.6 uh, forever, so 0.6, and then doing that menu 2, 2, pressing Enter, tells me it's 2 thirds, and negative 0.3 if you want, negative 0.3, Okay, sorry, uh, negate, point three, and then, I'll, you know, a whole bunch of times, menu, two, two, press enter, negative one third. So I got two thirds plus four X, uh, so two thirds X to the third plus four X squared minus one third X minus four. See how R squared was one, that's good. Minus four is the D, um, and that's the function. So that's all there is to it. Okay. So if you need anything, um, the steps are written down right here um, or just rewatch this video. But yeah, that's really all there is to say about that. And um, thanks for watching. Bye.